going to read The Great Gatsby, you're going to read Romeo and Juliet, you're going to read all of these dead white guy authors. And, and <laughs> at the end of the day, if they're not, if they're not going to make any kind of difference for, you know, I didn't have any white students in my classroom. I only had black and Latino students. And if it wasn't a text that they were going to be able to access and make a difference with, then why were we doing that work? Mm -hmm. um, and there's definitely occasions where my students have challenged me on that. Why are we reading this text? Why are we preparing for this test? And I would, if I was having a bad day, I would, I would do the head on the whiteboard moment. Uh, and we would we would have to switch gears, and I, I'd have to check myself on, on those kinds of choices, I think. Did you choose to have more diverse literature at some point then? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. It's a mixture of, yeah, you need to think about the texts that are going to be more diverse. Um, you need to think about the texts that are going to um, open up the world for students. And I think part of why you still teach something like Romeo and Juliet, one, it's a, it's a good text. Or that, that Billy Shakespeare guy knew what he was doing, right? But on the other hand, I think it's also, um, there's something about the literature as a means of accessing social capital, right? The, right this is the, the water cooler argument, right? That when my students enter the, I don't know if there's water coolers now, actually, but when my students enter the workplace, they're going to need to be able to engage in, in these texts that are canonical for society, for better or worse. I know it's a separate debate, but for now, we need to at least have those conversations.